So I wouldn't mind taking a moment to sort of uh, get an idea of, of who's in the room. Um, who here has uh, been teaching a large enrollment class? Okay. So quite a number of you. Who here uh, anticipates teaching one in the future? Okay. Quite a lot of you. Um, I think the thing that I'm, I'm trying to get an idea of is uh, our, our major questions here um, uh, about what to anticipate while moving forward or what to adjust in our classrooms. I think what to adjust and how to. Hmm. Hmm. Oh. I just want to say I'm interested in how the concepts apply um, to the distance, you know, our online learners. Um, so since we're really using Canvas a lot anyway, I thought probably that a lot of this stuff could be applied to some even small or large enrollment. Well, that's, a, that's an interesting question. I hadn't thought about that before, and I, I haven't done distance learning yet. Yeah, we, we do a distance learning public speaking class that has 400 students and two instructors. And so we immediately had to find a way to have Canvas be able to moderate itself for a lot of that. So the instructor's job is really watching the speeches and providing feedback based on their their knowledge. Everything else we base in Canvas, but the part of active learning that we brought in after doing the training seminar this past summer was the feedback loop we were lacking. So pre-confidence survey, how confident do you feel about whatever the subject is, ours is speaking, and then after they do two speeches, how are you feeling now? And then at the, at the end of the term, the post-class survey, do you feel you've improved? What would you change, edit, or delete from the course? So adding that kind of loop in has been really helpful because students will be honest with you about what they liked and they didn't like. <laughs> they will tell you if you say it's anonymous, even if it maybe isn't, they don't know that. But if you say it's anonymous, they'll be even more honest with you. I know in my regular classes I use Canvas. It has a, it has a group feature so you can divide the class up and place them into groups. And if I were going to do distance learning and I wanted them to work collaboratively, that's the tool I would I would yeah. go to first and use. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I was with that, I was thinking with the speeches, maybe like peer review type of mm -hmm. thing as well. We, we actually do, we organize the groups on Canvas and they have to be in each other's audience. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And that's out, that happens outside of class. The speech recording with the audience is coordinated through the discussion forum on Canvas. So I can see that it's happening, make sure that it's happening, but the end result is they film their audience so I can see that their other classmates are there. So we haven't done distance learning in the intro biology courses, but the online platform that's used is the crux of how it works could certainly be adapted to that. The thing that would be lost is uh, not necessarily having people working together, which they get to do in the classroom setting, if you make it totally asynchronous, you would have to, yeah, if you yeah. wanted to include yeah. that group aspect in some way, you have to find some way to make that work in the system. Canvas, using Canvas or Learning Catholics also allows you to put them into groups is one way, but then it's a lot easier for a group to meet in the classroom <laughs> and know when they're supposed to be there, right? Mm -hmm. 